This is my scary phase. That's it. Just don't say nothing, just like. Because otherwise, who we got? Ant Man? No. Yeah. Easter, your favorite holiday? Because you about to eat some chocolate, homie. <laughs> Understand what I'm talking about? <sighs> oh, that's amazing. After a hundred years of seeing Anthony Mackie and Sebastian Stan make fun of Tom Holland, we see Marvel take advantage of their natural chemistry. But not in this episode. You haven't seen Spider-Man Homecoming? <laughs> I haven't seen the Falcon Oh no, there isn't one, sorry. <laughs> Before getting into episode 1, it's important to establish the key concepts that defined the original Captain America trilogy because Sam and Bucky's journey are built upon its foundations. Thank you, Captain America, but this belongs to you. Steve's journey was centered on a philosophical debate between tradition and modernity. The first Avenger was literally about a dude dressed as a flag fighting a rogue science organization who cut ties with its nation. That we both knew Hydra could grow no further in Hitler's shadow. Hydra relentlessly believed in technological and industrial progress with no acknowledgement of human life to the extent that Red Skull quite literally worked as prisoners to death. There are always more workers. Furthermore, he even argued... I have seen the future, Captain! No plagues! Not my future! Winter Soldier made this prophecy true by changing the contents of the flag. The spirit of the imagined community and trust that Captain America worked so hard to defend was effectively replaced by the philosophy of modernity. Your bank records, medical histories, voting patterns, emails, phone calls, your damn SAT scores. Zola's algorithm evaluates people's past to predict their future. Like with Hydra, S.H.I.E.L.D. was more interested in numbers than with human life. Civil War continued to narrow this down to the extent that it was about a dude trying to save his best friend in a world too complicated to support him. Not getting that S.H.I.E.L.D. back, am I? Technically, it's the government's property. Wings too. The Sokovian Accords, Tony and Zemo, they were all representatives of a modern world that was too different for Steve to reconcile with. Subsequently, Falcon and the Winter Soldier follows this pattern by centering its theme on disenchantment and social change. The first episode opens with Sam ironing his shirt and bagging Captain America's shield before thinking of Steve's final words to him. How does it feel? Like it's someone else's. It isn't. He's then sent after Batroc the Leaper and rescues a dude in a pretty dope flying sequence. Afterwards, Sam is reintroduced as a humble friend of the people. He speaks Arabic, fixes his own stuff. Furthermore, when he's in Washington, he honors Steve's memory and addresses. We need new heroes. However, Sam puts away the shield as opposed to carrying it himself. Therefore, immediately, he's established as someone who knows better, but is doing the wrong thing still. Rhodey is like, what the hell, bro? Why didn't you take up the mantle? Sam reveals and kind of recontextualizes for the audience's benefit that when he originally said, Like it's someone else's. It's not just a moment of anxiety, it's a feeling of genuine, deep, existential dread that runs far deeper than initially presented in Endgame. The first words I said were, It feels like it belongs to someone else. As someone else is Steve. As a result, these three sequences are used to establish the theme of authorship. As Sam explained in a speech, Symbols are nothing without the women and men that give them meaning. And this thing, I don't know if there's ever been a greater symbol, but it's more about the man who propped it up. Therefore, despite his displayed worthiness and skill, Sam is paralyzed by the fear that he has the power to alter the shield's meaning and therefore dishonor Steve's legacy. Thanks again for coming forward with the shield, Sam. It was the right decision. However, he does look at the shield with deep regret, so deep down inside, he does have enough self-respect that he knows he's doing the wrong thing and is throttling himself. Be in touch. The second act opens with a flashback where the Winter Soldier assassinates a Robert De Niro looking dude and kills an unlucky Asian lad. Bucky wakes up and it's revealed that within his pardon, he has to have regular therapy sessions. It's a condition of your pardon. And he's created a mini rule system with his therapist that he can deal with corrupt individuals that he once aided as long as he A, doesn't do anything illegal, B, no one gets hurt, and C, makes it clear that he's not the Winter Soldier anymore. I'm no longer the Winter Soldier. I'm James Bucky Barnes and you're part of my efforts to make amends. 
Therefore, Bucky is a simple but trapped man looking for a means to reassemble his identity and trauma. And currently, the only conceivable way for him to do this is to redeem himself alone. You're alone. You're a hundred years old, you have no history, no family. Are you lashing out at me, Doc? However, it's his isolation that inhibits him from having the capacity to reconcile with himself. As a result, Bucky, like Sam, is established also a man who doesn't entirely know what he wants and struggles with finding a footing in life. A foot in life. A fu Shut up, Leo. This is accentuated when Bucky hangs out with this old dude. Hey, I'm in the mood today. Hey, what if I buy? Fine. Who's similarly suffering from the trauma of losing his son. On one hand, their kindred old soul is disenchanted by the loss in their life. And on the other hand, they are substituting each other when it comes to having a paternal relationship. As the man gets Bucky a date with a girl. I'm game. Wow. Tomorrow night then? Tomorrow night's great. <laughs> In Act 3, Sam visits his sister who's selling their family boathouse, and unlike Bucky's screen time, the colour palette is bright, warm, and despite the arguments Sarah and Sam has over their roles, Sam is there to aid his sister and rescue her from her financial problems. That we qualify for our SBA loan. Under the old terms, sure, but these days, what with everyone just showing up, well, things tighten up. But Sam still refuses to sell the boathouse. Like Steve before him, he's defined by his loyalty to the past. We're not selling our family's legacy. Subsequently, the post-blip intensification of economic and political policies has now created the new social movement, Flag Smashers. Yeah, essentially these people, they, they want a world that's unified without borders. So you can see why a lot of people are into that. Sam's mate from Tunisia infiltrates one of their operations in Switzerland, where everyone wears a mask to aid in a superpowered robbery. As a result, the government then creates a new Captain America, a dude with the most punchable face ever to symbolically combat them. We need a real person who embodies America's greatest values. We need someone to inspire us again. It's a form of political theater with none of the conscience that Sam has. Therefore, he sits down with deep regrets. Bum, bum, bum. Consequently, going back to the tradition versus modernity debate, there are loads of subtle artistic and narrative markers that links it all the way straight back to the theme. The two forces at play are sneaky corporate America, creating a new Captain America to protect their increasingly unfair structures, and crazy kids rebelling in a destructive manner. At least, that's what's currently presented. I have no idea where Zemo fits in and it could totally change. Everyone is right and everyone is wrong, and it goes back to the broader question of how relevant is Captain America and his values in contemporary Temporary times. Crazy to think that nobody's gonna be carrying the shield. Hey, we went for 70 years without anybody carrying it when Steve was on ice, so I think we'll be alright. It's a different time, Sam. Is the tradition of the flag relevant with a generation of people grown up in a globalized world? Must Captain America be a symbol that's endorsed by America itself? Is loyalty, in fact, to the past something that is ultimately meaningless due to how fast everything is changing? I just got to deal with this. Right. Maybe it really is just time for us to move on. Either way, just let me help. Sam and Bucky, despite their very explicit differences, are basically men of tradition in a modern world where modern itself is constantly changing. Therefore, their inability to grasp it makes them impotent. This is new for me. I didn't have a moment to deal with anything, you know? I had a little calm in Wakanda. And other than that, I just went from one fight to another for 90 years. You know how we call a guy whose wife died a widower? Or if your parents die, you're an orphan. No, there's no word for someone whose kids die. It's like the worst thing that can happen. Consequently, the old dude is the equivalent of Steve's shield for Sam, for Bucky, for the reason that he's the answer and the cause of Bucky's ineffective feelings. Therefore, the show leans much closer to Civil War than Winter Soldier. The characters, at least right now, aren't set up to fight a massive physical technological threat. Instead, they're simply two people trying to build a home in shifting sands and navigating their way through their confusion. Furthermore, unlike the Captain America trilogy, the representatives of modern change, the Flag Smashers, aren't painted as the villains. Sure, they're painted as the antagonists, but unlike Hydra or S.H.I.E.L.D., they're not oppressing the masses. They are the masses. As a result, for Sam to take up the Captain America mantle in this new MCU landscape, he can't symbolize the nostalgia for what America was. This isn't freedom. This is fear. But must author a meaning that shows what it must become. Allies are now enemies. 
alliances are all torn apart. Everybody's just looking for somebody to fix it. He must so. represent change. Unless I'm completely wrong, then pretend I didn't say that. Anyways, I'm sure I'll talk about trauma at some point, but before then, I'm gonna go eat some pie. <laughs> panels all the time and this is the most stress <laughs> I've ever been before I came on stage I was like they're gonna kill me up there <laughs> Is there any chance, and of course you could say no, that I could get a selfie with your arms out? Are you serious? 